hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another video of uh, this playlist which talks about t3 stack prisma uh, next js uh, typescript and uh, next auth and trpc so this is the t3 stack we are covering and in the last video we cover we created a baseline monorepo so baseline monorepo you might have already seen this is the structure and i already discussed about each and every steps how to create this baseline monorepo and then you can start adding your applications inside this so let's say i already have one uh, application already there i will just talk about another app which is let's say trpc server then i can create uh, another folder to just know more about prisma then we can talk about another folder we already know tailwind and all so next is yes 30 right because these are the the part of our stack which we are building i will try to zoom it a little bit so this is what we have already built these are the applications i mean the applications we are now going to fill but we have already created this monorepo and i did pnpm install at the root so you can see there is a one application which i have created notes builder this application i have created just by using this create uh, next app so npm uh, create t3 app that will give you the folder structure and i just copied it here no rocket science just a simple setup i have already have now this notes builder is already uh, working so how we can run these applications i already have this uh, monorepo tools enabled so here i can just enable nx console and this is the notes builder so you can actually execute all these commands dev post install migrate and all i can just simply do the build so what uh, i mean i'm using nx nx is a monorepo tool and uh, here we are using pnpm workspace right it requires tslint uh, so what i will do is because i think i removed the tslint from next so let's keep them because the it's dependencies needed it so and i will just do pnpm install again so i will get the eslint uh, for the next js application and then i will do the build command so this t3 stack is like a simple uh, application we have we already have and i can just do npm run dev or simply build so i'm just doing a build command for this next js application notes builder because this is using t3 stack okay t3 stack and you can see we have already discussed about this in earlier videos the same notes builder application which we created using t3 uh, create app create react app similarly there is a command line and it it is using you can see the prisma migrations using sqlite and inside source there is a server which contains the trpc server here you can see this is the trpc server and your next js api routes this is your next js api routes pages apis and they are being handled so if you look into the api folder trpc all these are hand all the next js apis are handled by the trpc handler okay so it's like the full fledged uh, p3 stack application contains the prisma uh, next js tailwind because there is a tailwind configuration we are using default configuration it is using typescript ts config json and here is our components this is the pages and here we have created a default a landing page component we have created and you can also enable uh, authentication i think i was using if i remember i was using google authentication so you can see google client id google google client secret and this is my environment variables which i was using and it is allowing me to log in perfectly so this is my first application even i can just try to run and see how it really works so what we need to do is npm run dev in this particular application this nx console helps me to trigger any particular task on any of the application because we are going to have multiple applications here this dev what happened it is not executing anything It is a little slow so here we are executing a dev command so it should start the application on port 3000 so let's see on localhost 3000 
this is our application and you can see i'm already logged in because i'm using this google law google auth and here it will ask me for the same sign in with the google so it's using all these okay i have removed this application from my google auth because i exposed these credential in my video but that's fine you can actually have you can put your own uh, environment variables here these google client id and the google client secret and this application will start working as expected okay that is uh, what i'm saying now this is just like a t3 stack with a boilerplate code and all we don't need to worry about it we here we are learning here we want to learn the prisma how trpc different from grpc rest and all these different interface how to build a simple trpc server with express all those things we are going to learn next yes you might already uh, aware next yes 13 and we are going to then once we learn prisma trpc independently then we will try to plug all these things and we'll build a twitter clone so what we are going to do let's uh, just do some hands-on on the prisma so to do the hands-on we can just simply look into this prisma schema file and all i mean prisma uses this schema file and what is the role of this schema file it contains because currently uh, these models which you see here those all are being used by next auth next auth is actually a library which is providing us authentication and it is persisting the session in the database if you see our server and auth it is using this uh, adapter okay where can i see that it is using prisma adapter so it is persisting the session user session once you log in in the database that's why you are able to see lots of different tables in the Prisma schema. But if you talk about the Prisma independently, Prisma is a TypeScript uh, ORM for the Node.js applications that you can use with the SQLite, Mongoose, with the Postgres to create the, the models because I really love how Prisma does the migrations, how Prisma generate the migrations and uh, generate migrate and how we are defining the models because we have to define the schema file for the prisma that contains okay what is your tables what are your relationships and all so if you look into this this is the model that means this is the table you are creating example and then account then session and how the relationships are really working so id is here the primary key default is the cu id like uu id and the relationship of this user is with the user table relations field is user id reference is the id and this how, how this user is related to user is related to the user table inside a session and this is your user so it's like a user primary key is acting as a user id in this session table similarly do we see a relationship here uh, the user primary key is acting as a ref foreign key as a user id in this account table where id is actually reference key this ID is from the user table will be referred as a foreign key in the account table with the user ID. And this is the cascade update or delete operation. And this is a unique key constraint. Unique key constraint you added on the provider and provider account ID. So this is like a simple syntax you need to understand. You can just use these VS code extension for the Prisma that will help you to write all these different segments, data source, providers. So here you can see I'm passing the provider SQLite. Here you can uh, pass the provider Postgres and this URL it will be it is going to pick up from your environment file. So this is my environment file. Here it is picking up the database URL. I'm using SQLite which is a file based database. If you are playing with something and you don't want a Docker containers running the Postgres MySQL MongoDB, then you can just use SQLite and play around with the for the POC. This is what we are doing okay and then when you do the prisma generate and migrate it will actually create these migration files you can see sql file even i can just remove this uh, migration and we'll try to play around with this so prisma schema and what i will do is i will try to migrate so if i run the migrate command you can see it is saying okay we need to reset the database because the migration was already there i will just say yes all the data will be lost because i am deleting the tables i actually removed the earlier migration and it has created this new migration for me which contains the same stable structure similarly there is another command i think generate generate command is to just uh, generate the prisma client that we can see if it is there on the 
yes post install i mean generate always happens when you do the npm install it creates the prisma client and put all your models there so if you see not modules and i will go to the prisma and here i will go to not modules prisma client okay i will go to this is inside dot bin so this is my prisma client i wanted to see how the index.d.ts because from this we are going to access the prisma client okay i will show you how we are accessing the prisma client in our code so this is our apis okay and uh, prisma.example so where i'm getting it from i mean it, we are using pnpm so prisma client has been created there in the root and here you can see all the, the tables okay all the models i will say this is inside okay prisma client so these are all our models let me see uh, i will try to find them out because it's a very big file we have a user model yes you can see a global object so these are the session user account example because we have like four collections four tables right so all the models i can see here i will try to because there are many users if you look into up here you can see these are the model names these are the model names you put in the prisma schema files but when you create the prisma client it gets populated in the in this node modules prisma client so you will easily access uh, your models from the prisma client library so context.prisma.example.findmany this is actually a real method there so it is reading this prisma schema and generating the client generating all the models so when you update something let's say i want to just uh, create a new table okay so i'm just creating a random demo table Okay, this demo table needs to have a relationship with the user i will just copy this stuff okay okay user id needs to be a field also otherwise how would you refer i will create a user id field now it should do work okay user is pointing to the user this is the relationship and all okay that's fine let's try to now how what i will do is i will try to run the prisma migrate and what migrate will do migrate will check in the schema do we have something new yes and there is a uh, some validation error and what that is field user in the model demo the relationship field user on the model demo is missing an opposite relationship field in the user either run format i always think that formatting is the problem here i think i can go prisma format There used to be a prisma format commands. Okay, so if you read the error, you will understand what is the problem. So opposite relationship on the model is missing, right? So it was simple. I really missed it. So it can be simply demo, and it is pointing to demo, which is an array. Okay now the error is gone it can be simply uppercase demo so i just need to specify demo here and then i can just run the prisma migrate again and it will just create the table it will ask me maybe the file name okay what is my new prisma migrate file okay and here i can see a new migration has been created that contains only the change 
which I have created. So initially I have three tables. Now I have fourth model added date demo, which contains this foreign key from the user ID. So the local the local foreign key is here referring to the ID uh, primary key from the user table. This is how we write a SQL on delete cascade or on, on update cascade on delete on delete cascade on update cascade. So whatever you the, you are doing opera, operations cascade operations will be applied. And this is the migration log YML file. So this is how whatever the change you perform in the schema and when you run the migrate, it will refer it. So here, let's say if I'm changing this, if I'm removing this uh, foreign key column from the demo table, what will happen is now it also needs to remove this. So I will just run the Prisma migrate. So what is the use of the Prisma here? Prisma is providing Prisma clients to access the database and it has this really nice tool set Prisma migrate generate that helps us to create a migration file uh, and I mean do the state change in the database. Whenever you are updating then it will just do the state change and uh, apply those changes in the database. So here what it did it alters this right it drop table demo. Uh, so what it is doing here if you see create table table new demo and then draft table demo and alter table new demo to remove demo. Okay. <laughs> this is just a way of uh, doing it. What it is doing is it created first a new demo table without that uh, user ID without that uh, foreign key. Okay. First of all, it sets the foreign keys off so that it can delete a table. Then it is actually dropping table demo and then it is renaming the new demo to demo. So here you will understand how the migrations SQL are getting executed, but it is keeping the state consistent. Now we remove the re relationship. So our database also doesn't have that relationship. So this is the, the power of Prisma and how we are accessing the Prisma. Once you have the Prisma client in your applications, you will be just doing uh, Prisma dot model name dot find find many all these operations you will see that we can see all when we talk about uh, the code. When we write a simple CRUD operations or do some operations on the model, find first, find many, find unique, find unique or throw. Similarly, there are many operations. <clears throat> Count, create, update, delete. Because this is again an OR, right? So it, it has to provide all these different operations so that I can use and I can do all the different database operations. Update, group by, upsert, create, delete, delete many, find first, find many, find unique, group by. Because that is what I want when I am doing some TRPC server APIs, then I will be just inserting, updating, deleting data in the database. Okay, so that's all about like uh, how we are doing a simple Prisma, Prisma migrations and how we are using Prisma. Prisma schema file is easy to write. I mean, most of the time we don't have those many number of tables. We have only two or three tables and inside that we just define the relationships. So this is how we create a unique key constraint. This is how we define that. Okay, this is the primary key. Default is a CUID. It's a date stamp, so default now. If this is updated at, then updated at. These are the existing annotations provided by Prisma. Prisma already knows the meaning of UUID, CUID, how to define the relationships. And this is consistent across all the SQL based database, like either you use Postgres, MySQL, or any other database, RDBMS database. And this is how you define the unique key constraint on any particular table. Okay, now next thing what we are going to build is I'm going to build a TRPC server simple using express. If we are trying to understand how to build a simple TRPC server with the uh, and build some simple APIs and then most probably how to use the TRPCs, how to call the TRPC server at the client side. Because it's not just a plain REST endpoint where you can use Axios or fetch. It's not a REST API. It's not even gRPC where you can just use a query and mutations and you can use Apollo client. It's a TRPC. So obviously you need to have a TRPC client for the React app. And it's again an under, underneath on the HTTP because it's a RPC call and uh, you will be using TRPC React client library to make a simple uh, query and mutation. I mean, it is somewhat like a GraphQL but something different. Okay, let's explore that uh, by building a TRPC server and creating a simple client app. 